Terry's led into the chamber with all the enthusiasm of a condemned man. OK. OK. You ready? I'm ready for the gel. Here we go, dude. He doesn't have a clue what's happening, but he's resigned to his fate. It's just all a day's work around here. He's wired up to the EEG machine. Let the mind games begin. Good luck, my friend. How's it look? Extremely relaxed. He's got pretty low activity going on. After five minutes of zero stimulation, the baseline is well established. So Tari dons the psionic helmet and attempts to control Terry's mind. Through the power of thought alone, Tari's trying to change the pattern of Terry's brainwaves, a result that will show up clearly on the EEG machine. At first, it's a rerun of the cafe fiasco. Then there's a sudden spike in brain activity. I don't know, something spiked. I don't know where it went like this. Yeah. To see if the helmet just worked, the team must wait until the EEG data comes back from the lab. But first impressions are that Terry may have fallen asleep. If he is asleep, that little glitch could have just been a dream. Possible. Or your psychic energy. It's possible. During the final five minutes of zero stimulation, Terry's brainwaves continue to do the lambada. You know, I wonder if Terry's mind is too advanced for this technology. Or he could just be psychotic. At the end of 20 minutes, he leaves the chamber and claims to have been dreaming. I had a dream I was, I was going straight in the uh, left lane, and a big semi-truck made a right. <laughs> <laughs> right there on Evans and the... I think we saw that right there. We saw you right before the accident. Ah! Yeah, there was one was point. Spike. There was one point where everything was off the chart. Grant sends off the data, and when the results come back, they make slightly disturbing reading. His brain's freaking out our system. Yeah. In particular, uh, the theta waves, which are related to sleep, were way up as if he were asleep, to, actually. To begin with? Even from the beginning of the test. So he's like a walking zombie. Tori <laughs> breaks the bad news. You had your shot and you blew it. So step forward, John, the Mythbusters researcher. It's time to get down to business. He's the only one in M5 still in the dark about the mind control experiments. So he qualifies for the job. How do you feel about high voltage shocks? <laughs> on, on myself or others? That's the right answer. John might actually make mind control material. But first, they establish his EEG baseline. Five minutes without stimuli, and John's baseline is looking steady. Time to fire up the first mind-molding machine. The interrupter is rotating. They run the pulsed air experiment for 10 minutes, keeping one eye on John's behavior and the other on his brainwave patterns. These atmospheric pulses are supposed to excite John's half-hurt sensory resonance. The effects can range from sleepiness to sexual excitation. To Grant and Tori's untrained eye, John appears unaffected. He hasn't fallen asleep and doesn't look excited. But for confirmation his brain waves haven't been affected, we'll have to wait for the EEG results to come back from the experts. I feel, okay. I feel good. Good. Uh, do you have the bees ready? It's time for the rotating magnet. <laughs> Just like the pulsed air machine, it's supposed to excite the half hertz sensory resonance. So Tori and Grant are once again looking for changes in either John's brainwave activity or his behavior. But once again, John looks unmoved. Next up is the subliminal sound device. This device apparently works by sending out a secretly encrypted audio message that can only be heard by the unconscious mind. Give Tori your money. Give Tori your money. Realizing this suggestion won't lead to an immediate visible result, Tori changes tack. Go. Touch nose. Touch nose. Touch nose. Eight minutes touch. in, and it's Tori, not John, who starts to crack. I touch your nose, you little punk. I swear to God, you better touch your nose. Touch nose, touch nose, touch nose. Don't make me come in there, touch your nose. John's nose remains untouched, and it's time for the final test. Next is Carrie's electronic hypnosis. This flashing light and tone apparently combine to induce an hypnotic state, which we'll be able to see on the EEG. Next thing we're gonna do is make the pitch a little bit lower now, because right now it's kind of annoying and fast. 
there's a jump in his brainwave. This time, John's brainwaves are clearly affected. And distracted by the pulsing tone themselves, Tori and Grant miss what could be the most significant result of the experiment so far. John touches his nose. Was it a delayed reaction to the subliminal sounds or just an itch? The jury assembles and it's time for the results. I gotta tell you, I really thought this was gonna be a pyramid power waste of your time, but um, it sounds like you might have gotten some real results on this mind control thing. The first one up is a uh, psionic helmet. Psionic helmet totally works. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, uh, until you can prove ESP, you're not gonna be able to test this one, so we're calling this one busted. Not surprisingly, a crystal mounted on a bicycle helmet does not give the wearer a third eye. Okay, pulsed air. The pulsed air, it didn't show any effects on their brain waves, and there's no real scientific evidence that proves that it works. So, so far, it's a waste of time. The results from the EEG experts showed the rotating magnet may have had an effect on John's brain waves. Rotating magnets. Now, the rotating magnet actually did have an effect on John's brain waves while it was spinning. However, there's a slight possibility that it was affecting the EEG itself. There is scientific evidence to say that direct electrical stimuli can influence behavior. So we're going to call this one plausible. So with the score at two busted and one plausible, what were the results for silent sound? Although John did eventually touch his nose, it was during the final test with the hypnotizer. Plus, the expert analysis of the EEG readings came back negative, proving silent sound is busted, and it really was just an itch. Okay, hypnosis. Uh, well, we did see a change in John's brainwave. There's evidence to suggest that remote hypnosis does work, so this one is also plausible. But it's a really limited effect, and like all of these mind control devices, they're not sophisticated enough to, say, make you buy more popcorn or drink more soda or... Or kill the president. Yeah. So that's it. We can all sleep safely in our beds. The final score is three busted, two plausible. And one more mind-boggling myth laid to rest.